Hello, um, we are in Perm, <laughs> Ural, Ural Mountains. I'm the head of the nature documentary studio called Elias Film. I've been dealing with cultural projects devoted to the uh, responsible attitude towards forests since 2010. And uh, in 2015, me and a very good friend of mine, who was a cinematographer, decided to make a movie about forests. But another project has happened. A little bit earlier. So the first movie that we started to film was about the first year of the brown bear cubs on Earth. And this movie is called Kamchatka Bears Life Begins. This film's idea belongs to the brothers, to Igor Spilinok, a very famous Russian photographer, and Dmitry Spilinok, a very famous <laughs> and uh, amazing nature documentalist. They wanted to make this movie about the first year of the brown bear cubs and they invited me to be a producer of this movie. So it was their idea from the very beginning. And then we started filming almost right away. After the time I was invited, maybe in two months, it was without any scenario. There was a, a big, big goal to film everything what is connected to the first year of the brown bear cubs from the moment they go out of the den until the moment they go to the den. Basically Dmitri was filming for the whole seven months and then we were deciding what to do with this footage and of course at the very beginning we had a kind of scenario a kind of a plot a treatment we knew that we want to show this 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 and that in the film a basic idea but nobody knew what would come out because when you film nature you just have to trust the way it goes because it is nature you can't you can't make it, you can't make it uh, do what you want. First of all, we wanted to show how amazing, intelligent, beautiful, emotional, etc. brown bears are. And then we wanted to open this world of the brown bear family to the audience. I guess very little uh, people know what is happening inside of the brown bear family. And the brown bear is a symbol of Russia, is treated, addressed in a little bit rude way, as I feel it. And we wanted to change this perception of the brown bear. And we wanted yeah, to show how amazing the mother bear is, how protective she is, how gentle she is, and uh, what's happening for the whole year of the brown bear cubs because we were filming on the protected area south kamchatka nature reserve we wanted to speak about the importance of the protected areas the importance of uh, protecting biodiversity brown bears salmon which is the crucial thing for this place there is a biggest uh, sokai salmon spawning area in the place that we were filming so this film is also devoted to the nature reserves to the protected areas kamchatka peninsula is the most eastern part of russia the site of our country, the side of the world, <laughs> you can also say. It's possible to get there by plane only. It's not possible to get there by land. It takes about nine hours to fly there from Moscow. There are people living there and it's a very rich peninsula. It's a very rich territory in terms of the natural resources, gold, diamonds, oil, gas, etc. But what is the most special about this place? It's nature, it's biodiversity, of course. Geysers, volcanoes, sokai, spawning areas, lakes. The place where we were filming, uh, the Kuril Lake is in the South Kamchatka Nature Reserve. It is the bear paradise. There are about 1,000 brown bears living there where the humans are not interfering at all. And these bears are happy because they are protected and they have all kinds of food they need. They have fish, they have berries and pine nuts. And because of that, bears are starting to lose the fear before men. And because of that, we had more or less good conditions to film them as close as possible. But you have to follow the rules, of course, how to behave next to these pretty big wild animals. Dmitry Spilinok, who was our major cameraman, he used to work in Kronotsky Reserve in South Kamchatka Nature Reserve for a long time before that to fight the poachers because it wasn't the bear paradise over there all the time. They were poaching wars with poachers, of course, when the Soviet Union collapsed and etc. etc. But it's another story how the poaching was beaten over there and now it's a bear paradise. Yeah, we managed to film pretty close 
closely, about 15 to 25 meters. But when you approach them with respect, with love, when you know that you are a guest on their land and there are no people living over there, except for the guards, for the inspectors of the nature reserve, for some volunteers and crews like photo or video. It's a very strict, strictly protected area. So when you approach them with love and respect and with basic knowledge of uh, their biology, their emotions, their characters, their reactions, it's more or less possible to film safely very close. Of course, it's not only about bears. I personally feel very close and deep connection to nature in general and to all the animals. For me, it was a very important step to stop eating meat, so I don't right now. And also our cameraman doesn't. You can see some pictures of uh, him doing yoga <laughs> next to the brown bears, for example. It is important for me, it is important for him to be ethically correct towards living beings. Me personally, I wasn't a producer, I'm still a producer, so I have to find money, organize everything, logistics, filming process, PR, crowdfunding campaign, etc. etc. I was also working with the sponsor, so I had to stay somewhere offline. <laughs> I couldn't stay there because there is no connection, there is no cell phone <laughs> available whatsoever, but it's impossible to work on the project not being in the field. So of course I went to Kamchatka in 2015. We continued filming in 2016 and I also went already as a director of the film with the second cameraman. This land has impressed me very deeply. I never felt anything like that in any part of the world, but I travel really a lot and it feels like another planet. It feels like there are no countries, there are no politics, there are no economical systems, money issue or whatsoever. It feels like a pure nature, the nature that we are just a little, tiny little part of and we are responsible to protect it. I felt it very deeply over there and it really helps me with the work on the film, with the post-production and everything. We finished working on this film in 2018 and it was premiered in February 2018 at the festival Dog Point, uh, Helsinki in Finland. Then. During 2018 and 19, we had about 45 festivals where this film was screened, more than 20 awards. It was quite a success, but what's the most important thing for me is that we managed to get to the cinemas all over Russia in 50 cities. It is the first nature documentary produced in Russia, which managed to get to the wide screens all over the country. I guess for me, it's like the biggest thing, achievement. And we are now planning to go online to the VOD platforms inside of Russia and outside internationally. We planning to sell this film to the broadcasters. Our next project would be about the life of the old growth forests. We will try to show the life of the forest as it is, the untouched forest, as whole as possible. The forest is a home for thousands of living beings. The forest is a, the most important ecosystem for not only survival of these living beings, but also our survival. The forest is a macrocosmos, the forest is a microcosmos, the forest is a spiritual place. So we will be filming at least in 10 places, in 10 nature reserves all over Russia, from Caucasus to Kamchatka, also Ural, Siberia, Baikal Altai, Russian North, Far East for sure, because it's the place where the biggest biodiversity can still be seen inside of the protected areas. Hopefully we'll be finished with the movie in three years. Yeah, let's see.